We've always discussed, debated the quality of TV programmes, whether that be on a Monday morning at work. This will just allow faster sharing and discussion about content. We are already seeing statistics where, you know, catch up TV via the PC. Um, in some programming is out, outstripping the linear broadcast. The BBC is a group of channels in the UK. Since the, the launch of the iPlayer, their audiences have gone up 9-10%. Australia has the highest DVD rental per capita in the world, and clearly the convenience of, of ordering those films from your living room is something that consumers will demand. And the first part of social TV we're seeing is, is people on their iPads or on their PCs, sort of on Facebook talking about the shows, Twittering about the shows. The more interesting thing is when that social interaction changes your viewing habits. There's hundreds of content opportunities to view and with improved technology through connected TVs we'll see the accessibility to that to be significantly better. We're starting to see a rapid evolution of what we call relevance. So recommendation engines, things that look at what your friends are doing, what's popular, what people like you, or even predictive behaviours on what you've done before going forward. This has been the biggest challenge since the invention of the internet, is how to find the stuff that I'm actually interested in. There's the social aspect, Facebook and Twitter have done a marvellous job of helping me find content I'm interested in because my friends are interested in, maybe I am. But there's an aspect of it that says, well, actually I'm interested in stuff, other stuff as well. What you're seeing now is more devices in the home that can access TV. Those shifts are pretty dramatic and, and quick, you know, the latent demand to view away from the family. The content as it should travels with you throughout the house and goes into whatever screen you want. And the other overlay is a sense of the curation and finding of the content, and that's done through through bots, if you will, but also through what my friends are doing. Does it really matter what device it's on? I think to the younger guys, no, it doesn't. It's not appointment television for them. They're not sitting in the lounge room going, OK, it's 7.30, I'm now going to watch this. It's, um, I've got my smartphone in my pocket. What is it? Give me the link. The younger generations want to interact now. In fact, it's not after the show, it's during the show. And it's quite common for them to have their laptop, their mobile phone, and the TV all going at the same time. If I look today, I, I watch my two oldest daughters when they watch television. They're always playing a game at the same time. Microsoft's been very successful in having Xbox Live connected to big screens, very social, games orientated, um, driving content through that and then adapting that to the TV model, so having streaming TV channels. Young people are likely to sort of watch television or watch video content in a more on-demand way than older audiences. If that means that they're watching more video content, that will create opportunities for advertisers. The classic Tiger Woods story of you're watching him teeing off on 14 going down Augusta. He's wearing a pair of kind of Nike shoes, he's playing a tightless one ball. In between him taking his practice swings, you'll be able to kind of potentially head onto the Titleist website and actually purchase those golf balls immediately. So I think we'll just see the, the speed of transaction, um, the, the engaged nature of the consumer taken into a true retail environment. If we roll forward, where content is available through many distribution channels, direct from the film studio servers, from YouTube developers, and you have measurement, which of course is the key of the internet, you actually know who's watching. You know that this is a young male interested in cars. You know this is a young woman interested in fashion. And so from an advertiser perspective, your, your ability to, to spread your money more effectively over multiple areas and have them critically measured in real measurement terms, not proxies, you'd have to say that the ROI for av the advertising dollar just goes through the roof. The unique part of digital is the ad serving delivery. So sort of five people looking at the same content see five different adverts. And as that starts to come into television style content, that will make the difference. We mightn't think about a living room so much or a cinema room necessarily. It'll be more about what sort of content do I want to watch and where. I think we'll see you know, the likes of Apple um, join up that experience between the iPad and the TV very, very quickly so that one's controlling the other. Zbox is already doing it with the Samsungs and LGs of this world. Social TV will be a, a good PR benchmark for great content. It will also allow the larger content distributors to probably pilot um, and test content before they commission a full series. For television, um, I think it's only good news. So the single most exciting thing I think for consumers is they'll be able to pay less and get more. You know, you're watching a program and you can quickly, you know, on a big video wall, you have somebody singing a particular song, you can pull out that information about that song off to the side, interact with that, purchase it, find out more information on it, but you're not changing the actual big screen experience at the same time.
And I think there's a lot more of that deeply immersive brand integrated content coming along that uh, the technology will be able to deliver ultimately. You know, I think it's going to look very personal.